In rural Visalia, California, on the first day of July, temperatures soared well past 100 degrees in the town's first truly sweltering summer weekend. The oppressive heat forced residents and visitors alike to stay indoors, giving the town a feeling of being strangely deserted. Casual observers would never guess that an almost 100-year-old institution had been holding its proceedings right off of Main Street for the past week. 43 women stood in sequin ball gowns and sky-high heels on a stage at the Visalia Convention Center to compete for the title of Miss California. The title not only secures their advancement to a bigger stage, but also an implicit approval of everything that it means to be a woman. But in 2023, in the eyes of the nation and the competitors themselves, what does that definition actually mean? And why is Miss California still in the conversation at all? To begin to answer that question and understand where Miss California finds itself today, we have to understand where it started. First, it's important to understand that Miss California is a subsidiary of the larger Miss America competition, not to be confused with Miss USA. Founded as a bathing beauty review, bathing beauties began competing for the title of Miss America. The first Miss America pageant was essentially a marketing scheme to capitalize on the popularity of newspaper-based beauty contests that used photo submissions. On September 8, 1921, 100,000 people gathered at the Atlantic City boardwalk to watch competitors from nine cities, and Miss America was born. The pageant was held annually for the next eight decades. As those decades passed, what a woman is exactly has always shifted alongside changing cultural attitudes, prompting the competition to shift as well, albeit slowly, and only with mounting pressure from the public. Feminist crowds first gathered to protest Miss America in 1968, questioning the pageant's central claim about how to best measure womanhood. But the most significant transformative moment in the institution's history was the 2018 rebrand into Miss America 2.0. Faced with calls to become a reflection of a society reckoning with the Me Too movement, multiple changes were implemented, including getting rid of the bikini competition entirely, and an overall effort to emphasize the service and advocacy arms of the competition. These moments paint Miss America, arguably one of the oldest American institutions, upholding a traditional view of what it means to be a woman, as an organization that constantly examines its own identity, just as much as its contestants do. Which brings us back to Visalia and Miss California 2023. This was the first time that the competition was held in the town, after spending almost 30 years in Fresno. The move struck many local title holders as well, weird, since the prestigious competition had been televised and covered extensively by local news outlets in the past. This year, neither television crews nor press were allowed into the event. Additionally, the residents of Visalia itself seemed to be mostly unaware of the competition's presence until a few days before its commencement. We literally didn't hear anything about it until it came out on the news that it was happening. There was two judges that came through and I asked the what the judge badge was about. And so she said that they're doing a pageant, judging a pageant, and that was it. The event itself was also subdued, held in a small convention center and attended mostly by friends and family of the contestants. It painted a picture of an event that was doing its best to fly under the radar while still maintaining the veneer of a powerful cultural organization. Which begs the question, why are these women, which include engineers, tech entrepreneurs, and a prospective Olympian, still seeking the approval of what still amounts to a beauty competition, despite all claims to the contrary? The answer is twofold. The crown of Miss California, and of a pageant queen in general, does in fact grant its wearer immense opportunities. Personal brand exposure, the opportunity to meet influential figures throughout the state, and a cash prize of $20,000. And, on a more personal level, being deemed the ultimate example of womanhood is a lifelong dream of many delegates, like this year's Miss San Francisco, who became one of only a few trans women to compete at a state level. But that dream, at least for these contestants, can come at a price. While the competition has become increasingly diverse over the years, Miss America, and by extension Miss California, still needs to operate as a profitable business, and that means appealing to as broad a base as possible. 
A recent example is the organization's plan to send out new contracts for the upcoming cycle, which would require contestants to be biologically female or have completed their medical transition. Many former contestants view this as the latest in a long line of concessions that have been made by the organization to keep from rocking the boat. They have a consideration for who they're marketing towards and who they want a part of their organization. And for them, that is everyone. And so I think they're in a position where they're definitely trying to stay middle ground and make everyone happy, but at the same time, not making anyone really happy. Similarly, even after that 2018 restructuring where the organization got rid of a portion of the competition judging contestants' bodies, the organization has since brought back a physical fitness and health segment that factors into contestants' overall scores. It's also important to note that none of the semifinalists in this year's Miss California competition were plus-size women. Our new Miss California 2023 is Miss Berkeley Sabrina! <laughs> Miss Berkeley, Sabrina Lewis, an elite athlete, equestrian, and aspiring professor, was crowned Miss California this year. Congratulations! She's only the second black woman to win the title in the history of the competition. Miss California is an organization caught between two realities a brand and a business trying to appeal to an increasingly polarized nation while also honoring the increasingly diverse stories of the contestants who make up its ranks. The contest could feasibly run in its new format for many more years, perhaps shrinking more in size and stature, hopping from town to town and trying its best to sail whichever way the political winds blow. But at some point, rebranding and reorganizing will not be enough. It will have to re-examine what exactly it stands for in our current conversation around identity, social standards, and self-worth. It owes it to its present queens, past queens, and those of the future. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our 2023 Golden State Princesses. Fantastic job, ladies.